Hi, I'm Sherry Damaris and welcome to Macro Magic. And today I have with me a very special guest, Virginia Harper. Uh, she is the owner and founder of You Can Heal You, uh, this wonderful place in Tennessee where she's been working for years with um, people suffering from Crohn's disease. In fact, she has written a book about Crohn's disease and I oftentimes uh, recommend her teachings and her book to many, many uh, viewers that are suffering either from IBS or um, any sort of Crohn problem or even colon cancer. And Ginny has a story to tell about her life and how she overcame Crohn's disease, but also all the clients that she works with who suffer from these um, ailments, any sort of ailment from the digestive tract. And she's been a wonderful teacher and a big promoter of uh, macrobiotic cooking and remedies. So welcome, Ginny. Thank you. So nice to have you. And today I know you're going to show us um, a remedy drink to strengthen the intestines. Um, yeah. Do you want to just share with us how you got started in macrobiotics and um, a little bit about your journey through healing Crohn's disease? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Welcome to my kitchen. This is where I spend most of my time in my teaching. My teaching is very hands-on and very proactive for, so people know what to do. Um, I know when I got started many years ago, uh, over 35 years ago now, I was diagnosed with two autoimmune conditions that didn't have a cure. And the medical cycle I was in was not a happy place. I didn't have answers. I was having more and more side effects. And I was scheduled for my colon to be removed. And that became a huge motivator for me to quickly find something that would work otherwise. And so this was back where, you know, health foods was just getting to be popular. People were, um, you know, learning a little bit about it but it wasn't as rampant as it is today. So I really had to dig around and I came across macrobiotics. In fact, my dad came across it and insisted that I look into it, which I'm glad I did because it taught me, not only showed me, but it taught me why my body had gotten so out of balance and what I needed to bring it back to balance for my body, for my health code, for my metabolism. And it made sense from the get-go. It made sense that the food I was putting in was what was affecting not only my blood, but all my metabolic processes were not working properly. And in my case, my weakness was my digestive. And so with Crohn's disease, I suffered seven years in and out of hospitals, trying to get answers, and each flare-up was worse than the next. And because you're dealing with soft tissue in the intestines, it breaks down, it uh, frails and leaks and back into the bloodstream. So many times there's dual autoimmune conditions going on. And so with the Crohn's, it was evident that I had to change my way of eating and look at the combination of food differently and the quality of food. I was on many meds that caused side effects. The doctors told me I wouldn't be able to get off of them. But with macrobiotics, it gave me hope. And I just dove in. And the drink I'm going to share with you today is one of the main ones I use to help me get off the medicines because it kept the inflammation down, it kept my intestines coated. It kept uh, uh, the things that the pH, the sugar balance, all that that goes into making gut health important, it took care of that. And this was what my prime drink that I did two or three times a day, sometimes during the night. It just depends when you're flaring up. And what I like about this drink in particular, it can be manipulated to how strong you need it. And uh, Sherry, I can go right into it right now if you like. Sure. Um, yeah, I know how important this information is now for the public because you and I have had lots of conversations when we teach together at the Macrobiotic Conferences 
yeah. about how, you know, in the medical field, younger and younger children are suffering now from Crohn's and ABS and a lot of other um, dysfunctions in the colon. And some of the medical interventions are to remove part of the colon at a young age. And all this can be, you know, sort of looked at and um, dealt with through just changing your diet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been teaching this now for over 35 years, helping people um, turn their symptoms around and learn how to work with their uh, disease in such a way that's a gentle healing. Mm -hmm. My hope is that one day you're standing in front of a gastro doctor <laughs> and he's diagnosing your inflammatory bowel disease, but also saying, let's change your lifestyle, let's change your eating, see how far that gets. And if you need a little bit of, bit, a bit of medicine, here we have it to settle you down but not the drastic things. And you're right, the young people are the ones suffering with this. Mm -hmm. This is a young people's disease. Mm -hmm. And I work with children as young as two years old. Mm -hmm. And it's very heartbreaking to see a child, you know, bleeding in the toilet and thinking they're dying mm -hmm. and, and doubled over in pain and the parents at a loss what to do. There's nothing worse than seeing your child hurting. And so it became a mission for me to try to get the word out, uh, to have people to pay attention to the digestive and microbiome before you get in trouble. Yeah, and because I love that story you tell about the guy who stayed at your house one time and he went into a panic mode when he had a flare up. And you said, well, think back on what you ate, the, you know, the yes. day before and yeah. he talked about eating chocolate sundaes and things like that and, right. she, <laughs> and she you know, said, that's so true because the biggest lesson macrobiotics does for you is teach you about your body and as soon as you make that food and body connection then you become a manager of your health instead a victim of your disease mm. and that's why where i wanted to get to because I knew in my heart that once I got well, I never wanted to go back there again. I never wanted to start over again. I never wanted to deal with those symptoms again. So I learned to pay attention early on because we do get signals. We do get our energy drops, the weather changes, we're feeling stuff in our body, our digestion may change a little bit, but we have the mentality in this society to push through, push through, ignore. Mm. But if you just become a little sensitive and, and pay attention to how am I feeling today? Mm -hmm. How's my tongue, my taste, my, my body? Am I dehydrated? Am I, you know, am I sluggish? Am I, you know, constipated? I mean, all of those things gear you to what you need to eat that day. Mm -hmm. So is it extra greens? Is it more liquid foods that day? Or do you need to do a, a warmer stew to warm yourself up and your intestines up? So once you pay attention to those signals, then you can always be managing on the front end instead of trying to treat on the back end. I love it. And this is what yeah. I teach parents, too, to do with their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're going to show us the drink? Yes. So this is called Umeshokuzu. And the name encompasses the ingredients. So we're going to use umeboshi plums, with, which are a great uh, pickled Japanese plum that has been aged for a long time. This is a powerful anti-acid. There's none better than this. And the plums are a nice size. And you don't have to eat the whole thing to get effect for acidity. You feel a little bit of reflux coming on or acid headache coming on, just take a pinch, put it in your mouth, chew it up, swallow it. It's like eating a very strong pickle. So it will make you pucker, it will bring the saliva to your mouth, but it works almost instantly. Mm -hmm. So that goes in there, that's one ingredient that goes in there. The other ingredient is the show, which I'm using tamari. 
Um, you can sh use to show you. Uh, if you're gluten sensitive, you can use tamari. And tamari is there to balance out um, some sugar levels. And it is also fermented. I don't use the commercial soy sauces at all because they usually can take chemicals and sugars. I really stick to quality products that I know. And then we have the kuzu, uh, this magical, magical plant that grows wild. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee, and we have it growing wild in the landscape here. Um, it, it, the root of this plant is what's used from the kudzu plant. And it comes like this, it's sun-dried and harvested, and it looks like chalk, takes a lot of chalk. And you dissolve this into a beautiful liquid. The beauty about kuzu is that it has strengthening powers and it improves the integrity of tissue. When you think of the kudzu plant, what it does out in nature, the reason it's used to uh, outline landscapes is because it takes care of erosion. And so it is so compact, the roots, that it, it, it is a great, um, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? It's a great, um, they use it for the erosion. And so when you think of a leaky gut, what your uh, intestines are doing, they're coming apart, they're fraying, they're getting thin and inflamed. And then the kuzu goes in there and coats it. So it's one of the best things for leaky gut. And now we're a nation that suffers from leaky gut. Most of our autoimmune conditions they're uh, finding out is from the weakness in the microbiome and the intestinal tract. So this is so simple to make. Um, you start with a cup of water. So Ginny, if um, people can't get these ingredients, I know just using more root vegetables like carrots and daikon and burdock, um, you know, helps strengthen the intestines as well. Uh, chewing real well, mm -hmm. uh, eating more whole Absolutely. grains, fiber but foods. As far as, as far as getting the ingredients, you know, these can all be found at Amazon and Whole Foods mm -hmm. right now. So. Um, they're not as hard to find like it was way back when we started. Mm -hmm. Right now, I've taken the plum and chopped it up into small pieces. I put the pit, I'm saving the pit, never throw the pit away because that's medicinal in itself. And I put the fire on. And then I dissolve a teaspoon of kuzu in a little bit of cold water. Kuzu can be best dissolved in cold water. If you try to dissolve it in hot water, it will clump up. And the other main thing you have to remember is to always be stirring. Because it is a condensing ingredient, you want to dissolve it completely before you add it to the heated water in Obenboshi. Once it's completely dissolved, silky like this, then you add it in and you stir. And this is also really good for flus and colds because what happens is the kuzu sorts, takes the excess liquid out of your nose and your sinuses and things like that and pulls it down through your intestines to discharge. So, um, you know, for our viewers, this is a great natural aspirin, and it's a yes. great way to take away, you know, if you're weak or if you're cold, um, sick to your stomach. Kuzu is very, very good for that. Yes, it's alkalizing. So whenever you're off, whenever you're sick, whenever you feel cold coming on, it's usually because we get too acidic. And so the kuzu itself, the plum, all this we're putting in here, it's very alkalizing, mm -hmm. so it helps pretty quickly change the blood quality and then helps with the fluids like uh, Sherry was saying. In the same way, when you have Crohn's, IBS, colitis, all those inflammatory bowel diseases, 
that create watery diarrhea, then the cruise is wonderful for balancing that out in your system. You know, when you think of the colon, the colon is one, one of the last eliminated organs that our, our body uses to detox. And so it takes a lot and we have to be gentle with it and, and, um, and take care of it. And like Sherry was saying, it starts with so much more. And I always teach digestion starts in the mouth. That's where you break down the food completely to as minute components in order to be absorbed and, um, and the body utilizes it better. When you're swallowing chunks, your body has to build up more acid in order to break it down. Sure. So it does start in the mouth, the saliva uh, coating the food. You disperse amylase to break down carbohydrates. So it's all a wonderful system. If we just learn to respect it a little bit and, and manage it and support it, then you can have vibrant health and you can not be afraid every time something hurts or comes up. That's beautiful. Well, we're going to let you stir the kuzu and then we're going to watch a commercial. And okay. when we come back from break, um, we'll talk a little bit more about your work and all this like great information you're sharing with the public about how to heal the colon. Okay. Home and country. And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. If you're in pain, frustrated, trying your best to remain hopeful in an environment that tells you that your life is one of pills and surgery and side effects, you're not alone. My program compiles what I've seen to be the most revealing and strengthening healing tools that you can use today to take charge of your own healing and get started on your own path back to vibrant health and beyond. If you're in pain, frustrated, trying your best to remain home. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Welcome back. I'm with Ginny Harper from You Can Heal You, and we're talking about her actual book on Crohn's disease, and she's uh, shown us a drink, Umeshu Kuzu. Um, we're talking about the healing properties of Kuzu for the colon and how it can be used for colds and flus as well as, um, you know, IBS and um, colon cancer and all the, the, any sort of ailment that arises in the colon. So, Ginny, um, you want to go over again the ingredients in the Umashoi Kuzu drink okay. and how to order them? Yes, I would be glad to. I do want to say that when you stir this, you have to stir it long enough until you feel the thickness and the cloudy Kuzu that you put in there gets transparent. That's your cue that the magic has happened and is ready to pour into your cup and, and drink it. You want to add a couple of drops of the uh, soy sauce there at the end. So the ingredients I used were the omiboshi plums, the kuzu, usually comes like this in the packet, and then the soy sauce. And I'm using tamari, but you can also use uh, shoyu and water and that's it that's the ingredients uh, this is not something that you can overdose with and so i i know at the beginning i would do a lot during the day a lot during the night just whenever my tax would hit i would be doing a couple of this 
And, and when you keep doing it consistently, you're changing the biochemistry of your intestines. And eventually you don't need as much. It's delicious. It's a wonderful morning drink. A lot of people use it as a morning drink to start their day. But it's definitely remedied for the intestines. Yeah, and I like it that, I mean, people who still want to take their medication, follow their doctor's orders, of course, but then add this um, whenever they have a flare-up is really important mm -hmm. because I know that people oftentimes when they have flare-ups, they get really nervous and anxious and want to rush over to the ER. And it's really great that it restores the actual lining of your colon and it helps a lot with uh, the healing process. Yes. Yeah. So tell so us much, when you think of what all is there, you know, we, we're, we're talking uh, very mechanical on how that works, but we also have the neurotransmitters, the uh, happy hormones, the happy uh, brain chemicals that are all managed within the gut. Mm -hmm. And so I found that the more I drank this, the more soothed I felt. I would feel happy <laughs> when I knew I had to drink my kusa drink. It, it, it kind of um, comes in and readjusts and calms the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is a direct connection to a brain when we're eating or doing anything in our gut system. Mm, very interesting. I remember paging through your book, and in the middle section you have photos of when you just got diagnosed with Crohn's disease and you were mm -hmm. very heavy, you actually looked totally different than what you look now. <laughs> and, um, you know, a little bit, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, through that process. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, I was scheduled for my colon surgery, first colon surgery. And so this started working within the week. And so I, as soon as this started working, my change of, of uh, dietary choices and, and the way I was cooking and chewing and eating, then I knew I was on the right path. So I kept pushing the surgery back because I was doing well until I was able to avoid it. And starting antibiotics was not an easy thing because when you think of the way we're setting our habits and the way we think things are normal, all has to change. So at first you start off very mechanically doing the do's and don'ts that a counselor tells you, but pretty soon you have to connect and you have to see how this is working and helping me. And so I honestly can say it took a year for me to put all my ailments behind me. I had a blood condition that caused me to have strokes and I was on medicines for that. That cleared up, my Crohn's cleared up, and in no medical journal can you find that Crohn's and colitis heal or curable by medical means. This is the only way I've found where you can get a clean colonoscopy after you've been doing this for a while. And after a year of me feeling confident and learning what I was doing, my colonoscopy began to show it better and better until there was no signs of Crohn's which that in itself is a miracle. So it, it is a journey and it's a journey of dedication and it's a journey of allowing yourself to open up to changes. Because I remember one time, it was seven months into it, I was chopping a carrot and making my uh, a meal and I thought, you know, pretty soon I'll be able to go back to, and I was thinking to the other food, but the thought never finished. I couldn't finish it because all of a sudden I realized, wow, why would I go back when this is what's giving me life and healthy life? And then my diet, my healing diet changed to a lifestyle. And these 37 years later, it's been a lifestyle, a beautiful lifestyle that has allowed me to live a life that I was hoping to have one day, but never expected to. So it's giving me actual freedom and not being bogged down or attached to medicines or, or you know, disease that kept me back from things. That's the biggest gift this gives you. 
Yeah, and I think it's important for viewers to know, you know, the remedy drinks are helpful, but the most important baseline is to change the diet, to add more whole grains, which have fiber and beans and vegetables, and to stay away from chemically processed foods, a lot of sugars, um, too yeah. much, you know, animal food that produces acidity in the colon. Mm -hmm. So the colon wants fiber. Um, to clean it out and then the good microbiome foods like sauerkraut fermented foods and miso um, those types of foods so yeah. doing that in addition to um, some remedy drinks I think help help you along in the process of healing yes and if you think of what makes the intestine thrive is fiber in bulk Mm -hmm. um, now, if you're really in a sensitive and flame state, you want to be careful how you cook those things. And that, that's what my program's about. I've dedicated my life to make this macrobiotic digestive healing as friendly as possible at any stage a person comes to. Because I myself could not have sat down to a bowl of brown rice a regular bowl of brown rice at the beginning, it would have put me in the hospital because I was so sensitive and so inflamed. So I had to learn how to make it digestive friendly for my body. Mm -hmm. And that's my biggest plus that I can do for people is where you are. And I do, I get many people show up, but I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried many things, natural and healthy, nothing's working until we adjusted to them at that point and then graduate them into what the body needs to function on a daily basis. And I know you have some really exciting healing stories to share. Um, and I know that your book is presently out of print, um, yeah. but how can people contact you, hear the stories, hear more updates on what you're doing um, in Tennessee? Yeah, thank you. Um, the best place to contact me is Virginia at youcanhealyou.com and you spell it all out. Um, that's the easiest way. Um, I'm working on my second book, which will have more stories in there because it's always wonderful to hear the miracles that people create for themselves. And um, that I'm hoping at the end of this year, uh, I'll finish that project. And uh, when you do contact me, you can be put on my newsletter. And in the newsletter, uh, I send out each month. You always know activities and classes. I used to do a 10-day residential program, but because of COVID, where I'm not doing that. So a lot of things I've gone online, and my teaching has switched to that. And, uh, but I still do personal consultations through Zoom mainly. And, uh, and do my coaching program, which is the hands-on part of it. So yeah, we can really get a good start with it. I can't thank you enough for all the work you've done with children and adults and really got them healing from any sort of uh, colon-related disease. I'm just so impressed with your work, and I know that you're working closely with the hospitals down in Tennessee right now. Um, yeah. And I just can't say enough about how we really appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's a mission from the heart because once I realized, wow, there's other answers for this, it became get the word out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get the word out to people so they don't have to suffer. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Well, thank you, Ginny. We hope to have you back on the show again and support your work. And Thank just you. continue to inspire the world with all your knowledge and your teachings. I'm sure many, many more people will benefit from them. Thank you, Sherry. And I love what you're doing. And thank you for being such a support and um, helping to get the word out. Oh, thank you. And join us for another episode of Macro Magic.